We must contend with one of two realities. The reason why we get so many stories about women in the gym that are snooty, entitled and causing problems is because either men are misogynists and when men film their skin tight pants and their butts, uh, nobody cares. Or women are uh, frequently in these gyms entitled and causing problems. And I mean, it seriously, it's one of two. Maybe there is a bias. I think many women are going to say it's not fair. These gym bros show up, they do these things and then nobody complains. But when a woman gets mad, I think for the most part, guys aren't really filming themselves work out. But I want to tell you about the reality that men face too. See, you know, we, we, we here at Timcast, we got a personal trainer now. We're doing group sessions for the entire staff. All are welcome to join to get fit once per week. And then the rest up to you, really. And then for uh, uh, myself, uh, my girlfriend and I, we are doing three days a week of personal training. And on top of that, I skate. I've been skating every single day at least two hours. Uh, in the past week, I did take just Friday off. Thought that would be appropriate to have one day where I didn't skate, but at least two hours every single day. So intense workouts over the uh, uh, the past week. And we got to give a shout out to FitCast IRL. We're shouting out everybody. You watch this show. You watch TimCast IRL. The goal is to get fit by November. And I'm not saying get swole. I'm saying get fit. So if you find that you are overweight or whatever, uh, make better choices. I think what is the app? My Fitness Pal is the app that we use, that I use. It's awesome. It does cost money, but uh, you get to track. Actually, I haven't even put in my my food today. I'll do that right here. So today I had, um, let's do, we go to the most frequent. You enter in the food you ate. I had a protein shake for breakfast. I had a half cup of rice flour, some butter, some mixed berry preserves, and then I actually had a... uh, the protein shake I had today, I actually used the uh, Fairlife strawberry milk. There it is. And let's see if I got that in. And then I track all of that. And there you go. And I think I got everything in there. It looks kind of weird. What is it? 50 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat, 72 carbs. Sounds about right. We're getting fit, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, uh, so I'll give them a shout out. We're going to read that chat. But let's talk about this story because it's a question of, Is it that women are entitled in these gyms and causing problems? I mean, there's it's like never ending, never ending. Check this out. The New York Post says a personal trainer who is recording her workout at a gym has been slammed for her wild response when another gym goer interrupted her video. The fitness coach who posts under the handle at shaped by Shiana has captured the attention of gym fans after she shared a clip of herself performing a set of deadlifts. But the footage has gone viral for all the wrong reasons after many noticed Shanna shoo away a fellow gym goer who stepped in front of her camera while attempting to grab weights from a nearby rack. Dude, I I can't handle this, okay? The reason why I want to talk about this is because as I've begun to lift, uh, yesterday, personal trainer was unable to come. So when he said, you know what he said? He said, I get a message says, do 100 push-ups," And I went, yes. And then I immediately started doing push-ups, and I broke them up throughout the day. I did my first 50 push-ups uh, throughout the day periodically. Just whenever I had time, I'd be like, I'm standing here push-ups. And then, however, by the time the show wrapped, I had only done 60. So I had to do 40 in the next half an hour before bed. But that is, I will not, will not back down. And uh, in this, I have found that, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me grab this video for you. I'll play this video in a second. Uh, What I found is when I'm getting to my limit, I grunt. You know, Ian was pointing it out. He was like, I hear Tim and them going like, like I'm, I'm, I I don't know. It's like a natural thing where it's like, it just happens. And I remember I used to go to uh, Planet Fitness, which everyone hates now. And uh, is it Planet Fitness? I think it's Planet Fitness. Let me, let me, let me make sure this is right. Because if I'm getting it wrong. Uh, what is this? Yeah. Planet Fitness Lunk Alarm, a loud siren where they mock you when you're working out. And I'm like, I don't want to be there. And they have this thing on the wall where you like crank and it goes, and then like, they're like, if you're a lunk and you're dropping your weights or grunting, we're going to sound the alarm. And, and I'm like, "Ah, okay, I guess you're better off buying your own weights and going home. Like, dude, the room we have where we're lifting, it's a separate room. 
Like, I'm not grunting when I lift because I'm trying to signal to everyone in the building that I'm lifting. It's because I'm feeling that strain and I'm trying to push as hard as I can. And so I see stuff like this and I'm like, this is why I hate all this. Because I feel like most guys don't care. All right. So so here's the video. Uh, it's just a quick, quick little one from uh, Joey Swole. And, He's going to uh, lift his camera up. He's going to take a quick snapchat with the fin- yep with the finger and put it right back down oh i think this is not the right video what is it oh that was a different one here we go here's the video in question so here's a woman she's she's mad looking i guess she gets mad at this guy a lot to go over in this video so please bear with me first off just because you're filming at the gym does not mean that everybody else has to stop their workout just for you, including putting their weights back. And secondly, you're a personal trainer and coach. How do you not know better than to work out directly in front of a dumbbell rack, let alone <laughs> film? Dude, okay, this is what gets me. This is this entitlement that these people can come into a gym, which is a shared space that everybody's paying for, and think that they can cordon off this area and it now belongs to them. This is the problem I have with these gyms. There's this viral video, Libs of TikTok posted it, where uh, a guy's like, day 18 of scanning in with literally anything other than an ID, and he has a box of Cheerios, and he walks past the, the, the counter and scans the box of Cheerios barcode and it goes boop and he just walks in and no one says anything because they don't care. Yo, there's a lot of really bad stuff with Planet Fitness, but I, I got to say, in my opinion, I think Planet Fitness is one of the biggest problems with working out in, in terms of like getting people to actually want to do it. And it's probably because many of these gyms know that people will sign up and then never come back. And actually, that's good for the gym. Here's the thing. If you have a business and you uh, have like a gym, you're going to have wear and tear. You're going to have maintenance, cleaning, right? So if people sign up for, I don't know what, 10, 20 bucks a month and then never come back, that's good. So what do you do? You shame them and embarrass them. But don't worry. They signed up with your ridiculous plan and they can't quit, but they don't want to be there because people are filming, making fun of them. You got dudes that go in the girl's bathroom. You got dudes that are doing weird stuff that I don't even want to say because trying to keep it family friendly. But this is the problem. And, and the lunk alarm stuff, too. It's like, look, man, I don't care what you do. I go to a skate park. People are yelling when they stub their toe. I go to the gym. If you're grunting or whatever, fine. Don't drop the weights, though, because that's just, you know, like you, you actually just want to lift them anyway. But don't don't be overly aggressive with it. He goes. Joey goes on to say this man is nothing but nice to you. And you decided to put up this post anyway. Seriously, I hope this gym sees this and kicks you out. And they did. She got banned, apparently. He also called out another post shared to her account in which she shamed a man using a treadmill on a steep incline, which she posted along with the message, please don't be this person leaning back on treadmills. Mr. Soul's video has been viewed over 20 million times in 24 hours and I'm asked almost 20,000 comments. Most agree with Mr. Swole, calling for gyms to ban recording of any kind. Here, here. And stating they felt bad for the man she scolded. OMG, I wanted to cry. Poor darling man. You go to a gym and you're like, I'm going to lift some weights. And some lady's filming herself. And it's always these women. Why is that? Why is it? He was nicer than I would have been, remarked another. As one shared, he was so nice. Makes me so sad. This is so crazy and sad. Bless this man's heart. Shiana hasn't responded to the video, but both her Instagram and TikTok accounts have been deactivated. Wow. The subject of banning people filming their workouts using cameras and tripods has become a heated point of contention for those who regularly frequent fitness facilities. Now, I'll tell you this. I ain't going under these gyms, but they really should not allow filming. OK. And then we have this. According to MSNBC, if you exercise and work out, you're a Nazi. Oh, I love it. This one's from last year. We all remember this one. So here's uh, Kit Catalina on X, who has a community post in FitCast IRL. 208 days to the presidential election. That's six times the time needed to train for a 5K. That's three times the time needed to complete a workout program. And it's eight times the time needed to train to do 50 push-ups. Any percent. Get fit for November. Fitcast IRL, Timcast IRL, at Timcast. Shout out. Thank you so much to uh, Kit Catalina and to everybody who's decided to get fit. Uh, look, you know, I've been skateboarding my whole life. And uh, let me tell you my story. Let me tell you my story. So um, 
I'm a little kid. I was a normal little kid. And uh, my parents, uh, my mom got me rollerblades. Rollerblades were big in the early 90s. And so for some reason, I got a pair of K2 Backyard Bobs. And this was back when rollerblading, doing like grinds and stuff was getting big. And uh, I didn't really do much with it. And for the most part, I was a normal little kid. And then the freshman year of high school, I gained a bunch of weight. I don't know why. I think I was just depressed and I hated school. And so I gained a lot of weight when I was 14. And uh, this is around the time I, it's, it's literally right around the time uh, I just started skateboarding. And I immediately started to rip the weight clean off. And I don't know how long it took, but it was, it was super quick. I lost all the weight and became super skinny. And from then on, I skated all the time, been skateboarding quite a bit since then. And uh, depending on the, on the period, you know, the thing about skateboarding is that it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an intense workout. It's like, you know, when I'm on the mini ramp, I can hit VO2 max. My heart rate is at like 180. And I'm, I'm 38, so that's, that's like decently high for, for my age. I think that's around my limit. They say, I don't know, whatever. And, uh, you know, the weight just melts off, right? But then there are periods where you don't have time. And so uh, when, I was, when we were living in Deptford in the, in the Jersey area, I actually uh, got down to like 165 or something because I was skating in the backyard every day after work. And uh, this is before Timcast IRL. And then when we started Timcast IRL and moved out here, there was nowhere to skate or exercise. And so I slowly just started gaining weight. See, what happened was when I was skating at my peak, I was, I was eating like 8,000 calories a day. I'm not kidding. I, I am absolutely not kidding. Uh, I don't know. Maybe 8,000 seems high, but I don't think it was. I would eat like whole pizzas for lunch. And so what would happen is I would go to the skate park nine in the morning and I would skate until 6 p.m. Nonstop. I had to bring like four beanies and like five sweatbands drenched in sweat, slamming Gatorades and just dousing myself in calories. And uh, when I first got out there, I was, I don't know, I probably like 170 and then I dropped to 160. And uh, uh, when I stopped skating, you know, for whatever reason or slowed skating down, my eating habits relatively stayed, stayed relatively the same. So I'm eating a ton of calories. And so then, uh, you know, coming here uh, to West Virginia with nowhere to skate, I, I within like, I think it was like a year and a half, I was up to 200 pounds. And uh, now I'm at 180. Um, and that's a combination of, I started working out lifting. So I am putting on muscle mass and shaving off body fat. Last year, I was down to 168. And that was because I was skating every single day, super high intense. And I was cutting out all the carbs. So now what I'm doing is not intended to be like, oh man, I was 200 pounds. I should probably stop eating sugar and eat better. Now it's just, I got to lift. I got to be responsible. And so I think that's the plan. And so I'm around 180 right now. And uh, so it's like, it's always a battle if you're, if you know, I'm, I'm eating a lot more protein, a ton of protein and lifting more. So I'm gaining muscle mass at the same time, reducing fat percentage. So it's like, I'm not really concerned about overall weight. I just care about body fat, body fat percentage. The funny thing is I got one of those fancy scales that measures like body fat and all that stuff. And it's like, everything is good or better, but you're overweight. And I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. What? It's like, yeah, your body fat percentage is uh, average, but slightly low. And uh, your muscle mass is fantastic. And, uh, uh, you know, your caloric intake, all these things, they're really, really great. And you weigh too much. And I'm like, well, what if everything is good, what am I supposed to do? I guess I should lose body fat. But I'm, I'm not really hyper focused on that. So uh, let me let me tell you, I'll tell you my macros right now. That's what the old trainers got me at. 229 uh, carbs, 62 fat, and 186 protein is what I'm currently currently at. And it's high intensity workout stuff. Now, let me tell you this. That's just me. I enjoy doing it. Lifting feels great. Like when you're just pushing and you get to the point where you can't do it anymore and you're like, oh man, it really does feel good. I can't even begin to describe. Like if people came out and told me how good lifting felt, instead of saying like, you need to get fit and start like, well, I was talking to Joe Rogan a while ago. He's like, hey man, you got to start lifting. And I'm like, I know everybody says you got to start lifting. But if Joe said, bro, trust me, lift for like a half an hour and it blows your mind. You're going to feel like a million bucks. Now kidding, like euphoria, like you're on drugs almost. And it's like, what? I've gotten the, the runner's high. I used to ride my bike to work through New York. So I'd have to go over the Manhattan Bridge. Was it Manhattan Bridge? Or it might've been Williamsburg Bridge. I think it was Williamsburg Bridge. 
And so that 10, it was like, it was, I don't know, maybe might've been like, a, I don't know how many miles it was, maybe seven miles, but up and down the bridge to get up that bridge, you're just pushing to the point where you're about to break. And then it's just like runner's high. You know, you get that endorphin release. I recommend this for all of you. Okay. We got 208 days to the election. You don't need to run a 5k. I don't think you need to complete any insane rigorous workout programs. And I don't think you need to do 50 pushups. I think you should. But my whole thing was go for walks. A 15 minute walk every day could change your life. You're getting more sun. You're going to get more vitamin D. It's going to be better for you. Fresh air. Think about what you're eating. See, the thing about, you know, you know, in skateboarding, there's this funny thing where skateboarders are like, some days you have good days and some days you have bad days. I've not had a bad day in a long time. Why? Because I'm properly tracking my micro and macronutrients. And it really was it. What I learned, perhaps there were days when I was skating and I'm like, for some reason, I'm having a bad day. I don't get it. Yeah, because I ate garbage the day before. Too much salt, not enough protein. Now everything's balanced. My salt is way down, which seriously matters. It's kind of crazy. Eating way better, getting a lot more rice. I cut out gluten. I think that's what was causing me the problem. Seriously, every time I eat bread, it messes me up. And so elimination diet plus proper macro tra tracking. And now I think I've figured it out. Figured it out. And I feel like a million bucks. I've been skating every day and feeling really good and landing new tricks and, and, and getting it done. So here's what we can do. Everybody's talking about what can I do to change the world? What can I do? Well, you can take Jordan Peterson's advice and uh, clean your room before you try to change the world. And that is get fit, get healthy. And you know what? For a lot of guys, it's going to make you more attractive. It's going to make you more confident. It's going to feel better. It's going to make you more effective in, every, in many ways. I mean, I, and don't get me wrong, like ladies, you can get fit too. We want to be the best versions of ourselves. If we truly believe that this country is worth saving and there are deep problems with, with it, then Jordan Peterson's advice of one, cleaning your own room implies get healthy. And two, find the heaviest thing you can carry and carry it. He's right. Not that Jordan Peterson's the guy who's lifting because he certainly does not appear to be, but he's totally right about this. And then I love the one where he says, don't bother kids when they're skateboarding. That's right. So I'm going to lift heavy things. I'm going to clean my own, my own room and skate. And all serious says, my girlfriend cleans my room for me. But, you know, that's a whole other story. It's always great to have someone there who helps support you. And uh, we work out together. And she actually helps. Um, she actually cooks the food. And she makes, I, I'm actually convinced when we, when we, on Fridays, we do like sushi day. And I'm pretty sure the next day when I skate, like I feel okay but my Saturdays are always a little rough. But when I skate on weekdays, it's always a million bucks. And I'm like, I know what it is. It's Allison's cooking. She does like the healthy, healthy fats and the right balance of everything with the rice. And then I, I feel like I could punch a bear. It feels great, man. Let's get it. This is the, we're going to cut out the BS. We're going to shame the shamers. The people who want to film in the gyms and tell you you're wrong. No, we ain't doing none of that. We're cheering for everybody everybody. Look, man, here's the way it should be. And here's the way it typically is. These people, like these ladies who want to mock you and shame you, and they want to insult you when you go to the gym, none of that. My experience, you go to a skate park. Let's say you, you, you're trying to figure out how to get fit. I can't tell you much about anything else, but I assume it's the same in most places because dudes are always trying to encourage other, other people. Sometimes they fight. I, I get it. But I tell you this, you go to a skate park, and you've never skated before, and you're trying to learn and you're watching, I always say, first, you do want to be careful because if, you, if, you are, uh, if, if you're in the way of an obstacle, you become the obstacle. So you don't want to do that. But I tell you this, if you show up to a skate park, no matter who you are, how old you are, whatever, you could be 400 pounds. You walk in or you could be scrawny. You could be 5'3 and 100 pounds soaking wet. You walk up to any of these local skaters and say, Hey, uh, hey guys, my name's so-and-so. I never skated before. I really want to. I'm wondering if you guys could tell me, give me some pointers on how I can use the park, right? And what I should do to start. Any skateboarder who hears that is going to get so insanely excited because when someone asks you for help, I want to skate. They're basically saying, you, sir, you are the great skateboarder teach me your ways. And for the skater, and I feel this is true for like any sport, it's validation of your skills and the hard work you, you, you put through 
like the training you did. And so it feels good. You're like, I will absolutely help you. I worked really hard to get where I am. And you have acknowledged my abilities, which I will now train you. And so uh, my whole life, you know, I'm a teenager. I'm skating at the skate park. A mom comes in. She's like, my kids don't know how to skate. Would you mind teaching them? And we were like, yeah, of course, dude. It feels so good to have someone recognize the hard work you've put in, even if you've only been skating for a little bit. Let's say you're skating for six months. You can ollie. That's how. That's what we call it when you jump. You've, you're getting a little bit in shape. You're riding around. You're doing kick turns. That's when you turn around on a ramp. And then someone else comes in and says to you, whoa, can you teach me how to do this? And now you have become the master. I say all of this to encourage you to get fit, to eat healthy, to feel better. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all then.